Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to talk about a hardened heart, how it comes about, and how it can affect our relationship with God. Three times in the third chapter of the book of Hebrews, God pleads with us, Harden not your hearts. It is therefore not surprising that we are told in Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow springs of life. What causes us to harden our hearts, and how do we get them right again? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Hebrews 3.13 says. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called, today. That none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. There is not a more timely warning in the Bible than this. The deceitfulness of sin is one cause of the hardening of our hearts. Sin presents itself as a sheep in wolf's clothing to us. And before we realize it, it has swallowed us whole. One of the deceitful things about sin is that. It promises freedom but only brings slavery. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, John 8:34. Sin deceives us into thinking, this is just a harmless pastime. You can quit at any time. But once we get in, it ensnares us and shackles us up like slaves. We discover that we are prisoners of our own appetites and habits, when it is too late. Pride is another way we can harden our hearts. Bible says King Uzziah served God faithfully. And God blessed him and made him strong. But then, 2 Chronicles 26.16 says. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly, and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God. Pride can make a man seem invisible and untouchable in his own eyes. Uzziah's heart was hardened because of his status and prosperity. God struck him with leprosy, and he was driven out of the palace and out of the city. Our hearts can harden when we take a defiance stance toward the Word of God. Zechariah 7.12 says. They made their hearts diamond hard lest they should hear the law and the words, that the Lord of hosts had sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Therefore great anger came from the Lord of hosts. Many of us receive the Word of God, not as God speaking to us, but rather as men, or our pastors, speaking to us. So the degree of respect we give the word being preached is measured by the degree of respect we give the person preaching it. When we continuously fail to hold the word of God in high esteem, our hearts become hardened towards God and his word. Another cause of hardening of our hearts is doubt or disbelief, or when we forget the mighty works of God in the past. Mark 6 51-52 says. And the disciples were utterly astounded, for they had not understood about the loaves, that their hearts had been hardened. Jesus had just performed a miracle with five loaves of bread and two fish. But when a storm arose as they were in a boat, the disciples were afraid. They failed to realize that they had Jesus, the miracle worker in their midst. The Israelites watched God perform mighty miracles in the wilderness. And yet they failed to believe in God, and this prevented them from entering the promised land. Another cause of a hardened heart is when we think we can depend on ourselves, instead of trusting God. Isaiah 47.10 says. You felt secure in your wickedness, you said, no one sees me, your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. Another cause is when we are not grateful. When you become ungrateful for what God, or others have done for you. You get hard-hearted and become distant from God. Romans 1.21 says. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, 
and their foolish hearts were darkened. Learn to count your blessings, and be thankful for everything that God has done for you. 1 Thessalonians 5:18 says. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. How does a hardened heart affect us? First, you lose your joy. Bible says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is what carries us in our service to God. It gives us strength to go through our everyday trials and challenges. But if you lose your joy, you are like someone traveling alone in the dark. You will stumble and fall. Hardened hearts cause us to lose our assurance of salvation. We can never get full assurance if we are not living holy lives. Someone has said, if your assurance of salvation does not make you run away from sin, then sin will rob you from enjoying your assurance. The next thing you are robbed of, is your fruitfulness. You cannot bring forth fruit unto holiness, unless you are watered with the dew of heaven. But your hardened heart has cut you off from the vine, which is your source of life. Another tragedy, is that you will lose your purity. The Saviour says, They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy, Revelation 3 4. You cannot be part of this walk, because your garments are soiled by the hardness of your heart. The child of God who wanders away also loses peace. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 7. Peace is no longer your portion. In place of peace, you will have fear, anxiety, worry, and depression. And finally, you lose power in prayer. Jesus told his disciples. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And James added. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But because you are now disobedient, you find that God will turn a deaf ear to your supplication. God will say to you, because you would not hearken to me, neither will I hearken to you. How do we ensure that we don't fall into such a terrible state? Begin at the root. See sin for what it is, sin, not a harmless pleasure. Paul says, put to death therefore what is earthly in you, Colossians 3 5. Kill sin or it will kill you. Keep your conscience alive, by meditating on the word of God. Let the word of the Lord dwell in you richly. How you respond to temptations depends on the amount of God's word that is grafted onto your soul. What temptation comes knocking, the word responds, it is written. Do not trust yourself to walk away safely from sin. Many saints have fallen because they trusted in themselves. They think they are strong enough to take on Satan. Romans 13 14 says. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, to fulfill its lusts. When you invite a woman into your room, to watch a romantic movie with you. You are making provision for the flesh. When you visit porn sites on your phone, you are making provision for the flesh. Always remind yourself that, you are dead and your life is hidden in Christ. Remember that it was a sin, like the one you are staring at, or playing with. That nailed Jesus to the cross. And ask yourself, do I want Jesus to go through that terrible experience again? Always live in the presence of God. Make prayer a habit. A man who is a frequent visitor to the closet, does not walk into sin. Because he knows God is right there beside him wherever he goes. Frequently call yourself to account. Examine yourself if you are in the faith. Where possible, have a trusted brother support you to be accountable to God. Remember that Christ is coming. And because you have this hope in you. You will be holy just as he is holy. And you are eagerly awaiting to hear him say to you. Well done, good and faithful servant. 
Enter into the joy of your master. God bless you.